When it comes to getting the best dynamic range, color, and overall picture quality from your camera, you all want to be using log footage. And in this video, what we're going to be discussing is what log footage is and how to use it to get the best quality out of your camera. So first off, what is log? So log is actually short for logarithmic, and what that is is it's a color curve created inside of your camera to retain the most dynamic range from your camera sensor, ranging from the shadows all the way up to the highlights. Now for anybody that didn't know, dynamic range is actually describing the number of grays between the black and the white. That's why you'll always see cameras now describing how many stops of dynamic range that their new camera sensor has. So whenever you see somebody talking about dynamic range and how many stops of dynamic range it has, it's describing how many shades of gray between the black and the white that you can actually see from the camera sensor. And it doesn't matter whether you're discussing Canon C-Log, Panasonic's V-Log, Sony's S-Log, Red's Red Log Film, Ari's Log C, or even Blackmagic's Log. All of these are dealing with a log format and they all created their own specific log color curve for that specific camera. Now log utilizes more of the sensor's information compared to a standard or linear video curve and that's because the actual log format is preserving and retaining as much information from the camera sensor as possible compared to a standard linear video curve which is actually being created to be best viewed by the human eye or the computer screen, phone screen, any kind of screen that our actual human eyes are laying on. Now when you actually go to record in log format, what you'll notice when you're going to record is, is it actually looks like it has no contrast and no saturation to your image, basically a washed up faded kind of look. And that's because what's going on is, is instead of filming in a standard linear video curve, what's happening with log footage is, is the actual shadows are being lifted and the highlights are being lowered. And that's to be able to retain the most dynamic range from your shadows to the highlights and making sure that no clipping is actually going on with your highlights. So you'll be able to get the best dynamic range and also be able to retain the most information from your camera sensor when you're filming in that log format. Now log is going to actually appear as a flat image to you all until you actually take it into your post-production editing software and you do color correction and color grading and one of the first steps is usually going to be a log to rec 709 conversion LUT and because each camera brand has their own specific log format whether that be Canon, Panasonic, RED, Ari, Blackmagic, they also have their own specific log to rec 709 conversion LUTs and I'll leave a link in the description of all the actual log direct 709 conversion LUTs that I've used over the years that have served me well. So go ahead and check the description down below if you want to use those specific log direct 709 conversion LUTs, taking your log footage into a rec 709 format. The cameras that do actually offer the log recording format will also give you the option to be able to view your screen or an external monitor if you are using it with the actual gamma display assist. Now what the gamma display is doing is, is it's adding back the contrast and the saturation to be able to let you view and see what your image will look like when you take it into post-production and go to take it out of that log format and remove the flat image and actually add back the contrast and saturation. So it's basically an assist while you're on set to be able to see what your image will actually look like when you go to color correct and color grade in your post-production editing software. Now I'm sure a lot of you are wondering why would you want to record in a log format which is a flat image which has no contrast and no saturation in it when you're going to have to go back into your post-production when you go to color correct and color grade and re-add the actual contrast and saturation back to your image. Well this is why. It again goes back to retaining the most information or getting the most dynamic range out of your camera sensor which will give you the best options when you go to actually color correct and color grade. So when you use a standard picture profile or another picture profile that the camera company has already created for that camera, what it's doing is it's actually having settings that are baking into your image, which then allows less options when you want to go to color correct and color grade your footage in your post-production process. Now there are times when it is actually more convenient and better for you to shoot in a standard picture profile or a baked in picture profile that that camera company offers, as opposed to using a log recording format. And these are going to be a couple of the reasons why. If you're actually working on a project that actually needs a quick turnaround time and you don't have the actual time to be able to sit there and color correct and color grade what you would have to do with the log recording format this is an example of when it would actually be better to use a standard picture profile or another baked in picture profile that the camera company offers so the plus side of using a standard picture profile is is when you actually go to record that what you see is what you get from that image because it's already giving the baked in look to your image so really all you have to do and worry about is actually making sure that your image is properly exposed and then when you go to take that in your post-production, you have to do little or barely any color correction and color grading to your footage. 
Again, what you see is what you get with a standard picture profile or another baked in picture profile that that camera company does offer. So in certain times, it's easier and convenient to use these two different types of profiles as opposed to using a log recording format, which is going to give you that flat image and give you more dynamic range and retain more information in your sensor. But it is going to require more color correction and color grading when you go into post-production to edit. Again, the easiest way to explain this is think about editing a low JPEG photo versus editing a raw photo you're going to have way more options and capabilities in creating looks with the raw image as opposed to the low jpeg because the low jpeg is already put in the baked in image and settings on that actual photo as opposed to the raw format which you have way more uh, options and being able to creatively do way more things with that raw photo compared to the low jpeg so that's the easiest way to explain using a log format versus a standard picture profile or another baked in picture profile that a camera company does offer now on the flip side, if you do use a log recording format, you actually have to worry more about making sure that your exposure is dialed in and correct versus if you were using a standard or another baked in picture profile. Now I've used all of the different types of log recording formats on all the different types of cameras. And what I've found best is, is when you overexpose plus one to two stops, you get the best dynamic range and it retains the most information when you're recording in the log recording format. When you're recording in a log format, tools such as the Zebra, Histogram, and Waveform are also gonna come into play, and that's gonna be a major important factor in helping to make sure that your image is properly exposed so you can retain and get the most information out of your camera sensor when you are recording in that log format. So make sure to learn to use your Histogram, your Zebras, and your Waveform when you are recording in a log format, or any kind of format in general, you should be learning and utilizing these tools on your actual camera. In my opinion, I would advise anybody who has the actual log recording Recording format on their camera to record in this format or if you do have the raw recording format I would use that over the log basically it's raw recording log format and then a standard picture profile or another baked in picture profile that's the order of recording that I would go in raw log and then standard picture profile you want to use the log recording format and learn your zebras histograms waveforms also to learn color correction and color grading and this will all play into getting the best dynamic range getting the most information out of your sensor and in the end giving your video the best kind of quality that it can get and in the end that's all we really all care about is getting the most dynamic range and getting the best video quality from our image i hope this video was easy for you all to understand i know when it comes to dealing with log i could have gone more technical and gotten a lot more deep into actually dealing with log formats as far as the actual mathematics but for this video, I wanted to try to keep it in the most simple of terms so you can actually go apply this when you wanna go record in the log format on your video camera. I've also left links down in the description where you can actually go view how I properly expose for that specific log from that specific camera brand. Again, I will leave the links down in the description if you wanna go view that for that specific camera brand dealing with that specific log footage. As always, if you did find this video helpful, go ahead and do me a huge favor, it does help this channel grow. Go ahead and like, comment, and share this video as well as subscribe to the YouTube channel if you haven't already and make sure to click that notification bell to stay up to date with all the content that is releasing onto this channel until the next video guys i love y'all stay safe and i'll see you on the next video